God can turn it around if we turn to him. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to part two of this five part series. My name is Chris Bailey. So glad that you are here bringing in the sheaves. This is part two to looking at waiting on the Lord. One of God's promises is that when we wait on him, the outcome, the result will be a harvest. But before we see the power of this truth, I want to thank you again for watching. Please subscribe to this channel so that we can stay in touch. Make sure you hit that like button, that thumbs up makes the video easier for our brothers and sisters to find it. And don't forget, visit us online, changeministry.org. God can turn it around. You know, some of you have your driver's licenses. Well, with that in mind, we've got to understand that in life, there is a car that we have called ourselves. But because we are now connected and interconnected as family, husbands and wives, parents and children, brothers and sisters, we are in something much bigger than us, the work of God, the move of God. And it's a bus that we can't drive. And I'm glad that God said that the cornerstone of the church is Christ, not Chris. We can only drive ourselves into destruction. And so God is calling us to be faithful passengers and call on him and let him turn around wherever we find ourselves where we should not be. It's there in Psalm 126. This division shows us that in a song of degrees, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. This is a song or a psalm of those who were in captivity. This psalm is acknowledging that the laughter they're experiencing is because of the love of God in giving them new life. That the singing that they're singing, the songs that they are singing, that he's the one who's authored the lyrics. They're just lending voice to it. God can turn a situation around. He can turn losing into laughter. He can turn sorrow into song. Now we got that. But how does he do it? Now, look at verses three and four, where it builds on the truth of God being able to turn things around. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Now, that's not a long verse, but that's a lot of life in those verses. The Lord hath done great things for us. If we are looking for God to turn the situation around, we've got to take our hands off the wheel. It's not even enough to just take our hands off of the wheel. We have to get out of the driver's seat and right position ourselves to go from being in charge to being passengers, passengers into what God now charges us to do. That's why in the fourth verse, the, the call and the prayer is turn again our captivity, recognizing God is not even the one who got me here. I'm asking him to get me out of the path that I'm in. We can pray this for ourselves. We can even pray for this in an intercessory way for others who we see need to turn around. Again, God can turn it around if we turn it over to him. Now, Psalm 126, verse five to six says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, Bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, this verse here is we've already seen how it's the what God can do the turnaround. The who God is doing the turnaround for who he does it for us. But now when it comes to the when there might be a process, you know, you, you, you can't you can't turn you know, a, a two seated roadster around like you got to turn around a tractor trailer. There is some time. There is some space that's needed. So a lot of times we can doubt God's promise because his promise is involving a process. Don't doubt the process as long as you know this is God's promise being fulfilled. It may take time. There might be some sorrow even still before they're singing. But the Bible says they that sow in tears are going to reap in joy. We see that we might go forth and have to do a lot of seed planting and then doing waiting on that seed. But the verse said in verse six that we will bring in a harvest. That harvest might not come until Jesus comes back, but that's a sure harvest. And don't, don't get discouraged if you hear that. And one of the reasons why, and I know that might be discouraging to think like, man, I gotta wait till Jesus comes. Well, 
he might be waiting because when that thing is fulfilled, it's never going to go back any other way. For eternity, that will be. And so God doesn't want you to get started on something and have to lose it or to get something and have to forsake it. He says, for some things, I'm going to wait so that you will have it and have it forevermore. But don't worry, that's not everything. Some blessings are for them and some stuff right now. God's waiting to turn it around. And what kind of stuff am I talking about? If it's a sin, if it's an addiction, if it is something outside of the will of God and the way of God, he wants that done now. He does not want that to wait until Christ comes. He wants to come in today. Don't ever think that God wants you to put up with your sin until you see your savior. That's the whole point of a savior. If it's sin, if it's a struggle, if it's a darkness, God's ready to flip that light on today. God can turn it around. Remember, if you turn it over to him.